it's Mother's Day. And Mother's Day is beautiful and difficult. Some mothers have wonderful close relationships with their children, and some don't. Some children have wonderful relationships with their mothers, and some don't. It's hard to remember that all relationships are here because we need to learn about ourselves and about life. I'm going to share a quote from Marianne Williamson. It's one I read a long time ago, but helps make sense of things when we put them all together. She says, relationships are Holy Spirit's laboratories in which he brings together people who have the maximal, maximum opportunity for mutual growth. They are the places where the wounds that we hold are brought up because that's the only way they can be healed. So wherever you are on this Mother's Day, and Mother's Day is part of all of us because although all of us aren't mothers, we are all children. We're all children of the mother who gave birth to us. We're all children of the divine feminine that gives birth to new ideas, the way God shows itself as us and through us that you mentioned so beautifully in our opening prayer. Roger, thank you for that. And we're also all children of the sacred Mother Earth on the holy ground which we stand. There's also within each of, each of us the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And when I look at the world today, it's truly time for all of us to be focused on giving birth to the divine feminine within us. We all want to be strong and self-sufficient and to be able to take care of ourselves. Yet, if we aren't vulnerable and soft, there's not a way for spirit to work through us. So this morning is very much about giving birth to our childlike nature, to letting it rekindle, but also to remember the importance of relationships. Life is about relationships. Relationships really teach us about ourselves and allow us to grow and become. They're the way we identify ourselves. And just think about it. Relationships touch us so deeply, whether they're good or they're poor. They're on the landscape of our minds and hearts all the time, aren't they? Aren't the relationships you have with people in your life something that you think about a lot? because they're the, the things in life that matter. They make life important in so many ways. You know, one thing I'm extremely concerned about is what we're doing to relationships right now with our focus on the busyness in life, the busyness of activities and things we do and screen time and things that, ta things that take us away from being connected. As Virginia was reading so beautifully this morning, I love that, that uh, reading, Virginia, was how we have to nurture and grow our relationships. You know, spirit, God, infinite intelligence, creative potential, whatever we want to call that energy that created us, designed us to be in relationship. We are intrinsically wired for relatedness, for infinite, ultimate relatedness with the wisdom within us, of course, but also with each other. It always, I, once we had had a great uh, an in, um, adventure in spirit on Indra's net, and the, it was so important, we had the picture up there, and it's always stuck in my mind of each of us as a little jewel, but connected together, so we could be touched by the gifts we each have with each other. So what happens? We're here to recognize and grow in that amazingness of life, but something happens. We get caught up in, well, we acquire fear and we learn hate because of ignorance. Ignorance in the world when we, and we disconnect, something happens and we disconnect from our true nature. We have to right now, 
if we want to get into that place where we can be open to the magnificence of life, we have to become open and vulnerable. You know, after Friday, I couldn't not read. <laughs> At least one of my oldest boyfriend's readings, he says, from the 12th century. If one were to tell an unborn child that outside the womb there was a glorious world with fields and lush gardens, high mountains and vast seas, with the sky lit by the sun and the moon, the unborn would not believe such absurdity. Still, in the dark womb, how could he or she imagine such indescribable mystery of this world? In the same way, when the mystics speak of worlds beyond scent and color and the five senses, the common man, deafened by greed and blinded by self-interest, cannot grasp that reality. Rumi said that. Did you guess? <laughs> we get confused because as we get more involved in the outside world that takes us away with the God we can connect with, the spirit we can connect with, the divine we can connect with in each other, as we get disconnected from that, we get disconnected from our childlike nature, from that place of wonder and wisdom that Virginia talked about. We get disconnected from that. And once we get disconnected from that, we start living in fear because we forget there's something so much more going on here. It's not this moment holds it all. But beyond this moment, the invisible is working in so many magical ways, we can't even imagine all that's happening right here and right now. We can develop the goodness in this moment, but there's so much more going on, and we don't want to lose that faith and trust in the miracle of life, that there is so much, something so much greater at work. So what can you and I do to develop that, that childlike nature? If you think of a child, not, what are child? They're children, they're innocent and humble. They hold wisdom beyond measure of spirit that we've lost along the way. And they have a trust in life. They trust their parents will care for them. They trust their friends will love them. They trust there's something so much more going on. Something so much more. Trust in Santa, in the Easter Bunny, in the Tooth Fairy, in magic, in miracles. They trust and are excited by life. They have that mm, enthusiastic expectancy. There was a little boy sitting at his kitchen table and he was drawing a picture. And his mom came by and said, Hi, sweetie, what are you drawing? He said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the wise mom said, Oh, do you know what God looks like? And he goes, Not now, but I will in a few minutes. <laughs> We need that confidence. We need that awe approach to life. That way we can be vulnerable and available to the so much more that wants to express through us. Now I know it's a pretty big ask today to say we have to soften and be vulnerable. But that's my request because that's the way spirit w works through us. That's the way the divine intelligence works through us. When we have mm, naked vulnerability, it doesn't mean we are naked. It just means we shut off all those walls we put up to being the way spirit uses us. When we do that, we say, use me. I'm available. Show me who I'm meant to be. Show me the possibility here. Grow me. Evolve me so I can be the best version of myself right now. So ask yourself, in this moment, what do you need to let go of in order to be that open vessel for something more? Because spirit doesn't make junk. 
Spirit makes perfect creations, perfectly created to be the optimum of what they're meant to be. Not anybody else. Just like that child's picture of Spirit of God is going to be his depiction. We each have our own depiction of how Spirit is to look through us. And that's my invitation for us today. How do we let those walls down? Well, I want to tell you, uh, Kirk and I, as I said on Friday night, we, we aren't really good at receiving. We like to give and we like to do that but you know you can get used up and I was feeling as I shared with our practitioner class I was feeling a little bit in the desert the last few months just I don't know just there and let me tell you what I know without question love heals love heals all things love heals and if we can learn in this world, we will all make mistakes, right? And we will all do amazing things, right? But if you and I can learn that love heals, forgiveness heals, we can heal. Prayer heals. If we can learn that, I will tell you, I grew greater than I knew because of the love that was poured in to that night and the love that we felt. It changes things. So as we close up this, there's two other sections of this morning, but I'm going to close it first. We started with through a child's eyes, but if we want to hear how love heals in action, I'm going to invite up a beautiful mother who was just, who just spoke at her beautiful daughter's bridal shower, and she had every woman there in tears because the heart speaks how love heals, and I'd like to invite up Karen Wolf. Through a mother's eyes. Mm. Ah, yes, I did get to speak at my daughter's bridal shower. How does that happen? She was just here just a little bit ago. <laughs> Um, but Sandy asked me to talk about, before I became a biological mother, I was a bonus mother, otherwise known as stepmother, but I don't like that term. Do we have anyone else who's part of a blended family or has had experience of blended families? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of us. And I had no idea what to do. I really didn't have any idea what to do as a biological mother either, but the blended family thing, I often say, is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. And I went to medical school, and that was really hard. But coming to America and getting used to the country and my new love and having a new three-year-old and seven-year-old as part of the package was daunting. And I was, my blood pressure went up, which I don't have any blood pressure issues. And, and understanding that everybody had drama in their life. These kids, they didn't want their mom and dad split up. They didn't want dad to have a new person in their life, especially not little Kendall that was totally in love with her dad. Like, who is this woman? And navigating that, it was hard. And I didn't have any lessons I wasn't taught about how to do that and and all I did was stay true to really the principles here which is love them anyway and you know uh, blended second marriages that have kids have a high rate of divorce and uh, it, it puts strains on that as well and and their mom got remarried so now the kids have four parents so what do they do with four parents so it was a really tough time and I, I counseled with Sandy because we have been part of this center for a long time and Sandy taught me a phrase that I have given to other parents uh, in this kind of situation. It really helped me and it, hopefully it'll help you in other parts of your life when I was really struggling with this very feisty young Kendall and 
and knew that she was an angry she was angry and didn't know how to deal with that and her saying to me was and i repeated it over and over i love you and i release you to your own experience i love you and I release you to your own experience, which helped me stay true to who I was and helped me to love her the way she was and, and be patient, just be patient and patient. And I'm here to say through all of that, that we now, as the four parents and the three children, because Steve and I were then blessed with our own daughter, we celebrate every holiday together now. Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, as this new family that we created from just figuring it out along the way and I believe staying in love just staying in love and believing as Sandy said that love conquers all and it was not easy and some people see us now as a family unit and celebrating holidays and wish they had that and I know it's possible and I know that it takes work so Families come in all kinds, and I woke up this morning, I'm just going to indulge Sandy a little bit here. I woke up this morning, and this poem came to mind, and sometimes that happens to me when it just kind of flashes there, and I, I said, oh, I've got to write this down, and I think it was part of the Friday night celebration, and, and this concept of blended family that I've been thinking about since Sandy asked me to speak, and it kind of reminded me that we here are a blended family, that we all come from different backgrounds, and that we have this uh, beautiful divine feminine that is birthing us into our magnificence. And I'm just going to read this because it, it came to me and it must be a reason that I wrote it, and it's very short, and it's called A Gift Called Sandy. And it's interesting that this morning we talked about seeds, and Sandy's already talked about the divine feminine, so there not, are no accidents that this flowed through me this morning. So, to Sandy, Let's see if I can get through it. You have planted seeds for 20 years, tended the soil, watered the potential, and nurtured the growth. Now, you celebrate the harvest. The beauty, the growth, the potential unfolding, that's us. <laughs> the authentic power of God's individual expression. The love that heals the world. This is your legacy. This is your gift. This is the divine feminine in action called Sandy. Thank you so much, Karen. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, man. What a gift. And I want to tell you, before I do our last little Mother's Day thing, we have a gift for all the women here. And we have enough of these that if you want to take one to someone special in your life. These books were written, it's called Goodness Gracious. They were written by a beautiful woman who attended our San Juan church. Her picture's on the back. Her name is Margie. Beautiful woman, just inside and out. She attended classes. She was part of our environmental ministry. Um, Deanna, my daughter Deanna, our daughter Deanna, who worked with her, she battled with cancer for three decades. And finally, at the age of 52, um, she made her transition. And I was blessed to be able to do that uh, service for her. But her husband gifted us with all these books of their beautiful spiritual sayings with amazing recipes and pictures. And they're all about spiritual things with beautiful food to match. So as you leave today, not now, but as you leave, there's a table here and a table out in the social hall. Please take a book for yourself and if there's someone you'd like to give them to, we have one on our coffee table. They're absolutely beautiful and the things inside are rich and delightful. So um, that means a lot. All right, now 
We're going to honor our women here. Now, women, we need each other, and men, we need you. So this isn't just about the women, but right now I want to honor the women. To the wide spectrum of mothering, to those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the, in the trenches with the little ones every day and with a batch of food stains on them, we appreciate you. To those who experienced loss to miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make it harder than it is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who have lived through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who have aborted children, we remember them and you on this day. And to those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed for it to be. To those whose step-parent or bonus parent, I love that, Karen, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who have envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not yet to be, we grieve with you. To those who will have emptier nests in the coming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. To those who placed children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart. We have real warriors in our midst today. We remember you. I would like all of our mothers to please come, and women, because we're all mothers, please come and just stand in the front of the stage. I got a card this morning from my beloved husband that said, I love you, and this is for all the appreciation I've never said out loud. And it meant more to me in the world because I know what that is and what it means. So, men, we need you now. I want you to think, for whatever good appreciation you've wanted to say to a woman in your life, you've got all sorts of them here. And since there is only one mind for all of us, whatever woman you speak to is going to hear that appreciation and it's going to be passed on. So, men, we just need, you don't need to get to every woman, but just make sure that every woman here has a word of appreciation that's meant for someone in your life that means something to them because that's the way life works. So come on down. Anything you have to say, come on down. No matter what age you are, come on down and say something kind and loving and wonderful. Oh, how beautiful it is. And just as you give a hug or share your love with the person that's right in front of you right now, may we know together that this joy, this love, this deep appreciation that's been shared right here and right now as you move back to your seats filled with a greater love than when you arrived this morning, feeling more appreciated when you came in these doors. We know that we are all part of one big joyous family, that we are here to help and celebrate each other. We need each other, male, female, all of it. We're here because we support the goodness in one another. We love each other. And I just want to tell you from the bottom of my heart and soul how much I love